Here I am along a fault that's helping set up the Sierra Nevada mountains. This is the Genoa Fault Zone. Hello everybody, this is Garrett from Earth and Time and today we're on the east side of the Sierra Nevada mountains just south of Carson City, Nevada where we're going to go put our hands on a fault zone and learn how are these mountains formed. So these are the Sierra Nevada mountains behind me and we're sitting just south of Carson City, Nevada really close to a town of Dayton and Genoa and we're going to walk up and find the fault that helps make these mountains. Hope you enjoy. The Sierra Nevada mountains are famous for a number of places, including probably the most popular Lake Tahoe, but there's a lot of other places along the Sierra Nevada mountains as well, like Yosemite National Park, and the highest point within the continuous United States, Mount Whitney. Today, I wanna to go to the Genoa Fault Zone, and so we're gonna go take a look at that and talk a bit about how faults help these mountains grow and how faults help mountains grow all over the world. Before we visit the Genoa Fault Zone, let's talk about the three types of faults that we find in nature. First, we see normal faults, and that's where block A moves down relative to block B. These are faults like we see in the basin range. Thrust faults, where fault A moves up relative to fault B, and, and this would be like what we see with the Himalayan mountains. And then we have strike slip faults, where fault A slides horizontally past fault B, and this is like the San Andreas Fault. So we've talked about the three types of faults. So we have normal faults, strike slip faults, we have thrust faults, and what we're looking at today is a normal fault, and so that's one that has one block goes up as the other side goes down, and in this case we're looking at a fault that's helping to pop up the Sierra Nevada mountains known as the Genoa Fault Zone. So as I work my way up to the fault, one of the things we can do as a geologist or as amateur geologists out there, or folks fascinated by rocks, is we can take a look at what kind of material is coming down the hill, and this can give us an idea about what we're looking at. So this looks like, potentially it was a piece of granite. It's been so beaten up because it's along the fault zone, but I see a lot of the rocks I'd look for with granites, right? So like the quartz and some mica that'd be in here. Maybe there's a little bit of orthoclase left in there, which is the pink rock. What's also neat, is we can see things like this. And these are striae or striations where one rock slid past another, so a fault zone. So this is a piece of a fault that is shed off the main fault surface. So I can look at this and say, okay, well, I'm seeing evidence that something's moved here. Now, I don't know if it moved like this, which would be a strike slip fault. If it moved up like this, which may be more of a thrust fault or reverse fault, or if it moved down, right? And so I can go over here and take a look there's a sharp boundary between the two of them. And based on what I'm seeing here, there's been rocks moving past this area, which is polishing and creating the striae. So looking at this, and then we'll take a look closer at the rocks to see if we see some evidence of how they moved, see if we can find some of these striae in place, and we can get an idea of maybe what kind of fault this is. So now I'm up against the Genoa fault zone, and you can see how large this fault zone is and this fault face is. So this whole stretch here where you see this white rock going in either direction. Is our fault plane. So we're actually standing right against the fault zone. And this is one of the nicest fault exposures I've ever seen. I've seen some nice ones in a couple other places in the world. But this is pretty spectacular. And is a world class site for geologists to come to to look at fault zones and faults related to the uplift of the Sierra Nevadas. One way we know it's a fault zone is that we can see what we call the juxtaposition or the difference of material from the left side here compared to the right side over here where we have this granite. And we can see there's kind of a gravelly deposit side and then we have our hard rock face here that's very steep and looks very beaten up. And so if we think about what our granite countertops look like and then we take a look at this, you'll notice a couple things. One thing you'll notice is that it doesn't look as clean or clear and it's look, it's flaking off, it's really beaten up. And that's what happens along these fault zones. You can imagine as the rocks are moving past one another, they're grinding and beating up and tearing chunks of the rock off as it's sliding down through time. And one of the things we do is we try to find lines in the rock or what we call striations. And these are gonna be features that give us an idea of how the rock moves. So here's some really fairly 
poor ones, but they're here. We can actually see how these striations go down the face, right? And if we remember how normal faults move, they move down. So this gives us an idea that one side of the rock slid down relative to the other side of the rock. And we can use our fingers to feel kind of the grooves. There's a low here, a low here, and a high, little bit of a higher feel here. So it tells me that this part of the rock, something slid down past it. So it gives me an idea that the relative motion of this fault would have been up and down, making it a normal fault. We can see some more striations up here, and we can see where the rocks move down relative to itself. And you'll notice most granites, when you think about them, are kind of this really nice white rock. You can see these nice crystals in it of mica, orthoclase sometimes, which is a pink rock you see in there, and the mica are the little black flecks you see in there, and quartz. Here though, you're seeing there's a lot more gray and black material in here, and that's because it's been ground up. There's been some other minerals maybe added to the mix as well. So I worked my way up along this area where I have some gravels up against the fault. So one thing I wanna do is show you the size of this fault zone. So faults can have really wide fault zones where we'll see a whole bunch of faults stepping out like places in Moab. Or they can be sections like this where we can, looks like the edge of the fault zone's right behind me here. And then here's the other side of the fault zone. So suggesting it's a pretty sharp contact, right? This isn't very wide, maybe a couple feet or half a meter in the metric system wide that we can see at least in this one area. So this is a pretty sharp boundary. Now, does that mean there's not faults that maybe help step things down out in the valley? No, there could be other faults that are underneath our feet that we just can't see because the top's been eroded off. But this is clearly the main fault that's uplifting this area of the Sierra Nevada mountains and dropping the valley down towards the east. Pretty neat to be sitting here on such a geologically important section that gives us a part of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Pretty awesome. Thank you all for joining me to check out the Genoa Fault Zone here on the east side of the Sierra Nevada mountains. It's really neat being able to check out a spot where we can actually see this large of an exposed fault zone and actually see a fault or a feature that's actually building these mountains, these famous mountains, the Sierra Nevada mountains. And we're able to come up here and put our hand on one of the faults doing that. Really cool. So thank you all for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave comments down below. I love to have discussions around geology. So I love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you know of other areas like this with exposures of faults, please let me know. Remember to subscribe to our channel to keep up on all my adventures looking at geology or history um, across the U.S. Have you tag along with me. And most of all, I hope you guys really enjoyed these videos. Thank you. Thank you.